Alright, here's a trailer review for the new Star Wars trailer. First thing I notice is that they seem to be going with a less is more approach. Uh, instead of just bombarding your senses like the prequels did with stuff all over the place, there's just a few things in each frame. Uh, the special effects are still incredible. It's like a digital matte painting right there. Um, but there's, they seem to tone it down while at the same time adding detail. And you can see a crashed X-Wing, crashed Star Destroyer, and then also the speeder that's going by is definitely looks like the same speeder from the first trailer. Then you hear Luke's voice, which is actually really cool because it sounds like Luke. Um, Mark Hamill, when he talks, he doesn't sound like Luke, so it's cool that he's making his voice sound like Luke from the older movies. Also, here's Vader's burnt-up mask sitting on some kind of shiny table, which raises two questions. Luke, why did you not burn it all the way or make sure it was completely destroyed before you left? I mean, it's your freaking dad. Uh, give him a proper burial. Make sure he's not just half burnt laying on the ashes on Endor. Uh, the, the second question this raises is who would care about a burnt up old Vader mask? Like, why is this significant? Uh, to trillions of people, this was a symbol of fear and evil. So maybe the new bad guy found it and thinks it's super cool, or maybe there's uh, some crusty, burnt-up old midichlorians that the bad guy's using to do some stuff, but I don't know why you would want a burnt-up Vader mask. I mean, it's neat, but seriously, what are you going to do with that? So this is probably Luke. Um, he is either on Mustafar, or it's just a big bonfire. I was thinking Mustafar first. Mustafar is the lava planet where Obi and Anakin had an awesome fight. But I'm leaning towards bonfire just because it's you can hear like a crackling sound. It just sounds like a big bonfire. So I don't know why Luke's having a big bonfire with R2 by himself. But this actually raises some interesting questions. Look at his hand. So in Empire Strikes Back, Luke got his hand cut off and then he had it replaced with a bionic hand that looked exactly human. But now he's got this crazy metal one. So did something happen to that one and he's just wearing this underneath? Did he get an upgraded one? I don't know. Also, why is he dramatically touching R2 while bowing his head? Alright, this is the part where he says my sister has it, and you see like this little kid or little girl arm handing the lightsaber over to what looks like my sister has it. What looks like some puffy Carrie Fisher hands. And the way that she's holding it, it's like not her lightsaber. Also, if you notice the hilt, it looks extremely similar to Anakin's original blue lightsaber, which is weird because Luke lost that on Bespin when he got his hand cut off. So so who's this little person handing this to probably Carrie Fisher, the puffy Carrie Fisher hands? Uh, she's definitely holding it like it's not hers. She's being careful with it. The big question of the trailer is after Luke says, you have that power too, is he talking about John Boyega? the black stormtrooper guy, or is he talking about Oscar Isaac? Uh, that guy? Is he talking about him? Um, because he says, my sister has it, so it doesn't sound like he's talking to Leia's daughter, which I'm guessing the dark-haired girl is. Uh, so I think he's either talking to this guy or uh, John Boyega after, they, uh, after he comes back from the dark side over to the Rebels. Okay, one thing that the teasers have been showing is a lot of TIE fighters in the atmosphere. They're just, they must be super excited about that. They, uh, there's a lot of TIE fighters dive bombing that little town and flying all over the place. I guess they were just excited to show that because we never saw that in the original movies. Also, check this guy out. He's turning around to do either a force pull, a force push, or a force grab. And this place that it looks like the Empire's destroying is the little... Looks like the little town from the Force Awakens original trailer. Also where J.J. Abrams did his little Force for Change thing. So this guy's mask looks like the mask from one of the video games or the older books that cover the stuff that's like 2,000 years before the other movies. So that's interesting. Okay, this is my by far my favorite part of the entire trailer. Get ready to have your mind blown. Okay, there's a guy up here talking. That's neat. Also, okay, they're on a winter planet with tons of guns. There's like guns all over the place. So it's a super fortified Imperial base. Also, they have a cool new flag. That's cute. Uh, but check it out. There's the new stormtrooper armors, but also look at this guy. It's like a winter stormtrooper. He's got his little skirt on with his little 
cute helmet. And then if you look to the left here, this stormtrooper, his visor is more narrow. So it looks like the stormtroopers, depending on the role in the squad, they actually have different armor. So I'm actually super excited for that. Okay, and then there's another guy on the right too with different armor. I'm going to try and pause it on that. Yeah, there he is. Check that guy out. Right there. That is so awesome. So he looks like these guys with the white, but then he has like extra ammo things and it's like more black, so more flexible, um, which actually reminds me of the chest piece of the scout troopers from Return of the Jedi. So that's awesome. And then if you look over here, there's one of the Death Star gunner looking guys with the with the domey hat. Then of course the TIE fighters are different now. They have white instead of the gray. So yeah, that's my favorite part of the trailer so far is these guys with the different helmets. And then uh, of course you have like the squad leader with the little shoulder pad up there. And some dude up there talking. And they're on some super fortified winter planet. Alright, this part took me a few times to figure out what's going on, but this TIE fighter is totally going rogue and shooting this place up. So the stormtroopers are freaking out and trying to retaliate, which is awesome. Alright, check this out. John Boyega's character, there's a bloody handprint, like literally a bloody handprint on his stormtrooper mask. So whether it's like the clone troopers and they just put alien blood on there to make themselves look cool from Clone Wars, I don't know. But... This could hint at maybe a more hard PG-13 rating with, with more blood and scary stuff going on. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty dang intense. Bloody handprint on white Stormtrooper armor. You you miss it if, if you don't look close enough. Also, he pulls his helmet off real quick. And once again, we see him breathing really hard again, like he does, like this. Super dramatically while he, uh, I guess, is deciding to join the light side. Also, note on the Star Destroyer, it has like a more bulgy spark right there, so it's kind of a new model. Also, that thing goes back further, so that's cool. New shuttles, that's cute. All right, and of course, this guy, which I have no idea who he is, but he is a full-on chrome trooper, looks amazing. He doesn't have the little dot right there in his mask like the other guys do, uh, and it's all shiny, which is super cool, and then of course he has a cape. The thing that really stands out to me about this shot um, is that at first you think he's inside of like a spaceship or something because all this stuff But what's all this? He's like it's like a underground like rock cave type place like a classic bad guy lair And you see the little droid peeking around the corner in the Millennium Falcon like he's hiding or like there's bad guys on the Falcon And he's trying to spy on them Then right here you have the dark-haired girl helping out this guy uh, presumably Welcoming him to the light side of the force. Okay, so a few things to talk about on that last shot. Um, you notice, once again, they're in the atmosphere. They're excited to show that. But you see the camera zoom in right as they fly into the engine. That cinematography move is straight out of Star Wars Episode Two, which started that cinematography move during action scenes. Uh, and movies have been doing it since and it looks like they're doing it in this one, too So there'll be a little bit of visual continuity between the two trilogies also um, And then of course when the Falcon flies through the ship it, it looks very similar to when they're flying inside the Death Star So that's cool keeping it visually consistent also now a note on these guys of course. He looks super old Chewie's face looks kind of puffy like deeper um, a reason for this could be that there's more animatronics this time, so his face might have a little bit more features. I don't know, but his face looks more puffy, so I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, and then also, if you look here, he's got a cool leather jacket, but also these little cylinder things are like basically Star Wars thumb drives, so that's cool that he has those on there. Uh, and, and then another part about this shot, other than it being cool because Harrison Ford's in it, is that their weapons are drawn and they're on the Millennium Falcon. And he says, we're home. So it's like somebody had it, and it, they like retook it back over or something. But why in the world would they have their guns out on the Falcon? So obviously they've been away from it for a while. All right, last few thoughts. Uh, you definitely notice there's a lot of practical effects, explosions, a lot of costumes and scenery which weren't in the prequels. Uh, also, there's definitely no shortage of CG. They're definitely going wild with it, but it seems like they're trying to be conservative and make it look a little bit more uh, real instead of just over-the-top and cartoony. 
But there you have it. There is my review of the Force Awakens teaser trailer too. Thank you very much.